Hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Jesus. Today, I want to take you to Matthew chapter 22 and a couple of stories that are told there that are connected. The first one is the Sadducees come to Jesus, and the Sadducees believe that there is no resurrection, so they ask him this following question. Teacher, Moses said, if a man dies having no children, his brother must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first married and died, and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother. So too the second and third, down to the seventh. After them all, the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, of the seven, whose wife will she be? For they all had her. So there's the question of, of the seven brothers. Whose wife will this one woman be? That's the question that they ask Jesus. And Jesus responds by saying, you are wrong. Well, that seems like an odd answer. One might have expected for Jesus to say, well, the first brother, or the second brother, or the third brother, or the fourth brother, or the fifth brother, or the sixth brother, or the seventh brother, because that's the question they ask him. But his response is, you're wrong. And the reason they are wrong is, as he says, because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. Well, that's an interesting answer. And it seems to me that what Jesus is saying is, that's a foolish question. Now, I'm sure most of y'all have sat in a class, whether it's at school and, uh, or at church in a Bible study class. And at some point, the teacher says, does anybody have any questions? And nobody has any questions or nobody says anything. And so a little bit later, the teacher will say, come on, now there's somebody's got to have questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question or no such thing as a dumb question or no such thing, you know, as a foolish question, something along that line. Well, there is. There are dumb questions, there are foolish questions, and here's one of them. In the resurrection, therefore, of the seven, whose wife will she be? That's a foolish question, because Jesus responds by saying, you're wrong. If you knew the scriptures, and if you knew the power of God, you wouldn't even ask that question. And so he rebukes them for the silly question that they ask. And then he goes on, talks a little bit more uh, to them about that, and we're not going to look at that today. But then the Pharisees hear that he had silenced the Sadducees, so the Pharisees get together. And one of the Pharisees, who's a teacher of the law, asks him a question in order to test him. And the, and the question was, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus responds with that very familiar uh, passage that we all know, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. And, and that's all we're going to say about that. So after he answers the lawyer's question, he then turns around and asks the Pharisees a question. And his question to the Pharisees was, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And they said, the son of David. And then Jesus says to them, how is it then that David, in the spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And evidently, that is met by a period of silence, which was probably somewhat uncomfortable for the Pharisees. Because Matthew says, after Jesus asked them that question, no one was able to answer him a word. Nor from that day 
did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. And one of the one of the interesting things to me, anyway, about Jesus is again, as I mentioned earlier, he gets right to the heart of, of the matter. And so the Pharisees are there, and he says, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And they go, Well, he's the son of David. And Jesus says, Well, if he's the son of David, how does he call him Lord? And he quotes to them part of Psalm 110 that David wrote, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. And then he says, if David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And they don't answer. Now, Matthew doesn't tell us that they knew the answer, but didn't want to admit they knew the answer, because if they had you know, knew the answer and admitted they knew the answer, that while Jesus was David's descendant physically, he was also David's Lord, he was the Messiah, then Jesus could come back with, well, then why don't you accept me as the Messiah? Perhaps they just didn't know. Perhaps they were ignorant. Perhaps they, they just didn't know. Matthew doesn't tell us why they weren't able to answer, why they didn't answer. But either way, the question that the Sadducees ask him about the resurrection and of the seven brothers whose wife would the woman be, and the failure on the part of the Pharisees to answer Jesus' simple question about if David calls him Lord, how is he his son, points to a problem that was prevalent back then and is still prevalent today. And that is a lack of understanding of the scriptures and of the power of God. The Sadducees were wrong in their question. They were wrong because they didn't understand the scriptures. And as a result of their lack of understanding of the scripture, they, they ask a foolish question. Because if they had understood the scripture and the power of God, they never would have asked that question in the first place. And the Pharisees, when Jesus posed this simple little question, they were not able to answer it. And all of us have sat in Bible classes where people have asked questions. And I'm sure when some of the questions were asked, we thought to ourselves, well, if he knew, if he or she knew the scriptures, they wouldn't be asking that question. And I'm sure all of us have had the unsettling experience of being in a class or being in a discussion with other people and somebody asks a question and we're sitting there going, we don't know, but we should. Or knowing the answer to the question, but not wanting to answer for fear of somebody coming back and saying, well, then why don't you live that way? Which, to me, one of the things that, that is common about both of these stories that points out to us is the absolute necessity of studying the scriptures and coming to an understanding of the power of God. Bible study was important back then. It's important nowadays. So let me encourage all of us to spend some time every day, reading the scriptures and praying to God to open our eyes and to open our minds and to increase our knowledge and to give us wisdom. So study, study, come to an understanding of the scriptures and an understanding of the power of God that is available to us. Well, I pray that you'll have a great day.